everybody, this is Sean Riley with Riley Real Estate and MassHomesale.com with this week's Q&A Saturday video. Uh, this week we're going to answer the question of what is the right of first refusal. So uh, a right of first refusal clause in a real estate contract is basically just saying that um, a buyer is putting in an offer on a property but the seller still has the option of entertaining other offers but if they get one the original buyer has the option of um, exercising their right to purchase the property that's the basic so when do you see these kind of things um, in a general retail transaction with real estate agents stuff like that um, you usually only see it in a situation where somebody puts in an offer and they have to have some kind of contingency in it um, that the seller might not like. Uh, they might otherwise like the offer, they might like the price, they might like the other terms, but there's some clause in there otherwise that they don't like. Uh, most commonly, you'll see that in a retail transaction when the buyer puts in a contingency that's, that they have to sell their current property. Um, a lot of times that's not a problem, but a lot of times it can be a problem because if they have a hard time selling their property, then they tie up the sellers they're the property they would like to buy from those sellers for a long, possibly a very long time or the sale could just fall through if eventually they just cannot sell their place and they stop trying. Um, so that one, um, I know when I'm selling a house after we fix it up and stuff, I uh, do not like to see a home sale contingency and will definitely um, give other offers much higher priority because of that. But with the right of first refusal, uh, basically, the buyer would put that in there <clears throat> so the seller knows that they can continue to market their property and accept other offers um, if something better comes along. Um, now, in a really hot market, if they get multiple offers, they won't care about that. But if you know they haven't gotten an offer yet or the offers they've gotten they haven't liked as much but they like yours otherwise, they might, en they might entertain that kind of thing. So the general mechanics in these situations would be um, you know, the seller would accept the offer with the contingency, and the, you know the buyers would go and try to um, work through the thing so they can finish the purchase. Um, the sellers, on the other hand, will continue to market the property to some extent, um, and if they get another offer, they basically go back to the first people and say, "Hey, we got this other offer. Are you? Do you want to buy the house or not?" Um, usually the contract the contract will specify some sort of time frame, 24, 48, 72 hours, something like that, that they have to make a decision if they want to um, exercise their right of first refusal or not. And generally, again, the, you know, it's a legal clause that can be written however anybody wants to, everybody agrees to do it. Um, but generally there's got to be some sort of time frame there. And <clears throat> what actually it actually means to exercise that right. Uh, generally what it says is they will agree to purchase the property and they'll waive whatever contingency was in there generally like I said that home sale contingency um, and you know they can't make that as a uh, reason to not be able to buy the property. Now you do have to be careful because there could be other contingencies in there that are more common such as a financing contingency. Um, so as a seller my advice would be that they have to waive all of the contingencies um, and have a reasonably big deposit down so it's a risk to them to not be able to complete the deal. Uh, the reason you obviously want a large deposit is because they only have, say, like a $500 deposit. They don't do it, they lose $500. That's really not a big deal. Even, you know, even if they say they want to buy it, if they eventually don't, they only lose their deposit. Um, so you want to have a sizable deposit in that case. And you want them to waive all the other contingencies because, for example, if they have a financing contingency, there's a good chance they can't qualify to get a loan if they don't sell their other house. So sort of a backwards or backdoor way of having the um, home sale contingency in there still being in effect because they just can't get a loan. They can't get a loan even if it's because of that other contingency that they waived. They still just didn't get a loan and they can say that their financing contingency um, is what they're pulling back on and get the deposit back. So that would be my advice on the retail side. Um, so that's the basics of that. With an investor, it's a little bit different because uh, generally you're not going to have something like a home sale contingency, which is, like I said, probably the most common reason you'd see it in a retail sale. 
for an investor, uh, sometimes they will offer that kind of clause in a some sort of an option deal, either a straight option or a lease option. Uh, in a lease option, you hear about people doing it. Uh, basically, um, we've talked about lease options before, but what it is, linked to some of that, is um, an investor will come in, offer to rent your place, and eventually buy it. Um, and you give them permission to sublease it to somebody else who will actually be the final purchaser at some point. Um, so, without getting into those details, with the right of first refusal, a lot of times the investor will negotiate the deal with the seller. A lot of times the seller is just looking to sell. They would rather do that than rent the place and eventually sell it, but you know they're willing to entertain that because they're having a hard time selling it. But if they get a purchase offer, um, a lot of times the investor might give them as an enticement the right of first refusal clause type thing. So if they get a um, purchase agreement, they can go ahead with that if the um, investor hasn't fully executed their deal yet, which generally means a lot of times they'll say that the deal won't go in effect until they actually secure the tenant, the final tenant, to go into the property because they don't want to be paying rent um, to the seller until they actually have the income coming in to um, cover their expenses. So that's um, one thing like that. Um, less complicated is if it's just a straight option to purchase without a lease. Um, you know, the investor might, as opposed to offering a purchase contract, they might offer an option contract, generally with a smaller deposit. Um, to have the right, but not the obligation, to purchase the property, and they might forfeit that small deposit if they do that. Again, they might offer the right of first refusal um, to some maybe have a smaller deposit at risk. Um, and when, <clears throat> so there's a couple different reasons why an investor might do that. They might not be totally sure they want to purchase the place, and it's a little bit easier to get out of an option contract because if you have a small deposit, say, you know, $100 or something like that, um, you do a little due diligence, you decide you don't want to buy it, you just say, you know what, I'm not going to exercise my option, keep my 100 bucks. Um, and that's the end of it. There's no more complicated, it's more complicated to exercise a contingency in a, a full on purchase contract. Um, another reason, so there's a whole bunch of reasons. So one reason could be, you know, they put on the option, they don't have everything in place at the moment to be able to purchase it, so they might use the time with the option to secure the financing, secure a partner to go into the deal with them. Um, you know, maybe it's not something they want to buy, but they think it's a good deal for somebody else, so, um, you know, somebody to sell their option to, because an option contract you can just sell, so even if they don't purchase it, they could essentially wholesale it to somebody else. Um, and like I said, or just doing more due diligence, you know, they might have um, an idea of what they think it's going to cost to fix it or something, and they put it under an option and they do some more research, get a contractor out there, an engineer, if they think there might be a structural problem or whatnot, and it turns out it's a lot more work than they thought. Again, so they just let the option go. The same thing can be accomplished by doing a purchase contract with an inspection contingency, so there's, it's just what people want to do. Um, just different ways around it. But in terms of the um, right of first refusal stuff, like I said, it's just sort of um, an enticement to make, um, you know, if that's not how the seller would like to sell their place, make it a little more palatable to them because they can still get a different offer on it. And if the um, investor doesn't want to move forward right away, then they can go with the other offer. And if they do, it forces... You know, if if I was one put to force my hand to be like, okay, you know what, I want to do this even though I haven't gotten all the pieces in place, but I, I'm committing to doing it, and I will just be able to get everything worked out because I know it's a good deal. You know, that is how that would more or less work. You don't see it that often, but it's something that can come up um, in an investor deal, and it's you know something you don't see very often, but can come up in a retail deal too. But definitely will come about in pretty different ways between those two different situations. Um, so that's sort of a synopsis of what you would see for a right of first refusal clause. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave a comment below, um, and I'll try to answer them. And if, as always, if you have something you would like to see in a future video, please, you can leave comments below. You can fill out a form on the website. You can um, put something on our Facebook page, our Twitter account, or send an email to info at masshomesales.com. And until next time, have a great week, and I'll see you next Saturday. All right, bye-bye.